Adobe InDesign is a great program for laying out presentations, portfolios, graphics, text, documents, anything like that. It's one of the main programs you'll be using if you're an architecture student, a graphic designer, an illustrator, any kind of creative professional. I'll be covering 10 quick tips that will help you get on your way to becoming proficient at Adobe InDesign. The first tip, and possibly the biggest, is going to be setting up your InDesign workspace for working efficiently. Now when you first open up a document, you might have a workspace that looks something like this. There's not much utility open here and there's not really many of the important features open. So the first thing I'll do is go to Window, Workspace, and personally I use Advanced, but you can use Essentials Classic or something else like that if you want. But Advanced is the best by far in my opinion, so just go straight to Window, Workspace, Advanced. You can see on the right you've got a few more tabs that have popped up. Um, the way I would arrange this workspace to be the most efficient is to immediately open out Pages and Layers tabs. I would drag these little boxes out of here as well, leave the links and pages together. I usually put layers and drag that to the right hand side. I have pages and links in the same little panel if I can get that to work. And then I have that underneath our layers panel. Now if you go back up to window and go into the objects and layout and then align. Pathfinder and Align are very useful. I typically have them at the bottom. I usually have layers at the top and then pages and links under that. And then I might have something like, depending on what I'm working on, I might have paragraph styles or text wrap, something like that out. So if you go into type and tables, go into paragraph, and I typically put that above a line if I've got that open. Uh, the links panel is really handy for having lots of images and things that you need to update if you make changes and the pages is handy to be able to quickly move through your document and add new pages and the layers obviously on top the most important of all now the next tip is going to be resizing images so you might just think you can come along and click on the image and start dragging these handles around on the borders but nope it doesn't resize the image all that does is change the frame around the image. It doesn't make the image itself any bigger. Now this is useful for cropping the image, but it's not actually going to resize the image. Now the trick is you want to be holding down control to resize the image. Now if you hold down control, that doesn't maintain the image aspect ratio, so that will distort the image. Now if you hold down control and shift while dragging the edge frame handles, that will maintain the image aspect ratio. But another quick tip is if you hold down Control, Shift and Alt, that will resize the image while maintaining the aspect ratio from the middle of the image. So that maintains the center point of the image at the same spot. Now the second point to this tip is if you've cropped your image and you want to quickly reset the edge frame to match the sides of the image, just select the image and push Control, Alt, C. And that will quickly drag the edge frame back out to the original image size. The next tip is going to be one of the most handy things that you can know to do in InDesign and that is previewing in InDesign. Typically when you work in InDesign, InDesign won't show the images or drawings you've placed in full quality. That's just to save memory and help your computer run faster when you have large documents. So at the moment you can check your display view by going into view, display performance and typically it will be in typical display, which is what you've got now. Fast display is pretty much just grey boxes. Um, if you go back into view and go to display performance, you can change it to high quality display. And the shortcut for that is Control alt h Another quick tip is if you want to preview what this would look like printed or, or without any orders or text box showing, because obviously these red borders and outlines aren't actually going to print, you can push either W to show the page how it would be without any of those aspects and push W again to go back to normal. Or if you'd like to preview the entire document at full size on your screen, push Shift W and that will bring you into preview mode which maximizes the page and you can simply click left or right mouse button to scroll through the pages in the document. And you can just click escape if you want to get out of that view. Now the next tip is going to be copying, pasting or duplicating. Now there's a few ways you can duplicate or copy things in InDesign. The first one is you can click on the thing you want to duplicate, hold down Alt and then drag it to a new position 
and that will copy it straight away. Now another quick tip is if you want to copy and keep the horizontal and vertical alignment down Alt and Shift while clicking and dragging the object into the new location and that will maintain its horizontal or vertical alignment. If you want to do a standard copy and paste you can simply push Ctrl C and Ctrl V but that will just paste the image in the centre of the frame. Another quick tip for copying and pasting is if you want to copy and paste some objects in the same place on a different page you can simply select those things. They might be text or titles or something that's going to go in the same location. Push Ctrl Z, go to the next page, then push Ctrl Alt Shift V and that will paste them into the same location on that page. Now you can do that on as many pages as you want. You just have to make sure that you've clicked on that page before pushing Ctrl Alt Shift V. The next few tips are about text boxes. Now if you've typed some text and the text box is too large for the amount of text you've written in there and you'd like to crop it down without having to manually go around and fiddle with it, you can just quickly push Ctrl Alt C and that will minimize the text box to its minimal possible dimensions. Now in text box if you want to align the font or the text you just click on the buttons either at the top or the right hand side under the paragraph toolbar wherever that is. It's left justified, right justified, centered, centered, align center. Now if you want to change the alignment of the text within the text box in its vertical alignment simply push Control B to get the text frame options box. Change the vertical justification alignment from top to center or bottom or justified whatever you need. This quick tip is about turning off automatic hyphenation. As you can see in this text box there are a few words which run over the edge of the text box and a hyphen is put in their place. Some people like it, some people don't. I personally hate it. So to turn it off simply push Control A to select all the text in the text box. Go to the paragraph menu and untick the hyphenate option. If you can't see the paragraph window on your screen, either push Ctrl Alt T to bring it up or go to Window, Type and Tables, Paragraph. The next tip is going to be about using master pages. Now master pages are a way of creating elements that will be repeated across all the pages that have that master page applied to them. It's mainly used for things like repeated titles, headings, page numbers, or other elements that you want to have on every single page with that master applied to it. Now the way you edit the master is by going into the master page under the page menu and double clicking. Now you're editing the master pages and you can simply place all of the things in here that you wish to be shown on all of the pages in your document and as you can see the border becomes dotted that's making sure you know that it is an element in the master page and not on the actual page and you can simply quickly just put whatever elements you need in here and the way to get out of the master page is just to double click back on a page in your page viewer. Now as you can see that mask has been applied to every single page in the document. Now the next part of this tip is using master pages to create dynamic page numbering and that means you don't have to go across every page and retype the page number. Now if you go back into your master page, double click in, select the text box where you want the page number to go, right click, insert special character, markers, current page number. Now I might insert a random character or letter, don't worry, that will automatically update. Double click out of your master page back into a normal page and you can see that the page number has been automatically set on every page and it will change. The great thing about using automatic page numbering in InDesign is if you were to delete or move or change a page it will simply update the page number and maintain their order. Now the next tip is going to be using the align tools. So the align tools are quite powerful at setting up a quick little layout. So as you can see here you might have a page with a few elements. Say you wanted to align this text box and this image both centered to the center of the page. You use the align vertical centers but make sure the align to is set to page and that will center them related to the page center line. Now if you wanted to align these two so that their tops are at the same level, what you can do is go to align to selection and then click align top edges. Now that will align the top of all the objects to the highest edge. You can do the same for the bottom or you can align them vertically. 
let's say you had a few images that you wanted to align to the edge of the margin, which is this pink line here, you would simply change the align to margins and then hit the align left edges and that will drag them both over to the edge. The next tip is going to be how to create an image grid. So what you can do is select the frame tool, click and drag over the entire area that you want the grid to take up and then use the arrow keys. So push right on the arrow key to add columns and up and down on the arrow key to add and remove rows. Now keep doing that till you've got the number you want. And if you hold down control and use the left and right arrow keys, that will increase or decrease the spacing between these. Now you simply release and you'll have your grid and you can now place images into these image frames using control D which will bring up the image place toolbar where you can select the images you'd like to place and then simply drag and drop them into place. That's it for this video guys. Please let me know down in the comments if there are any other tips you would recommend or anything you'd like me to cover in a future video. Cheers and thanks for watching.